Good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, today I'm going to start with a plant which lots of you probably know, the one next to me here, which is commonly called a spider plant or chlorophytum, if you want the um, actual botanical name. Sorry, things keep popping up. This produces little baby spider plants, or babies, I call them, um, on long stems. And these are what we can propagate from. So it's what we want to do is to encourage the plant to produce as many of these as possible so that we can um, make more plants from it. There are other ways of making more plants from a big spider plant, and I'll go into those in a minute. But looking at the workshop sheet, which I've got with me here, um, this will tell you all about how to do it using water as a method. But what we need, you'll see from this plant that I've got here, the spider plants are quite small, the little babies are quite little, and those aren't the ones we want to propagate from. We want to let it grow healthily and grow some slightly larger ones. On the other side, I've got some which are a little bit bigger. And that's going to help because what we want to be able to do is to put one of these little babies into a jar of water and we don't want it sinking in. We want enough leaf growth so that it balances on top. And I'll show you what happens when you have a very small one. Here's a very small one that we've got and I've had to balance it in a water container, but using these plant labels to hold it up above. What would happen is if the little plant that drops into the water, it will rot. And then we don't want that. We want little healthy roots coming from the bottom. Now, this is not the time of year to be doing this because the days are short and the temperature drops. So I would suggest what you do if you've already got a spider plant or you're growing one is to get it really healthy, put it into a new pot if you think that it needs to go into a bigger pot. In fact, I can probably show you this one. There are roots coming out of the bottom, can you see? And that's telling us that it really needs repotting. And if we repot it into some nice multi-purpose compost, peat-free, um, not a much bigger pot, maybe just an inch bigger than this, um, then it will help it grow more of these babies and generally be a much healthier plant. So what we're going to do is, is to think that these spy babies are big enough. And what do we do? Well, what we have to do is snip away. This is one way, there are others. Snip away the babies on this long stem with some small snippers. And what we should be able to see, and it's really difficult on a camera like this, but if you look closely at the bottom of your baby, you should be able to see a white mm -hmm. little lump, really. And that's where the, the roots are going to grow from. So that's the little bit that needs to be in the water. So what you do is you clean up the bottom of your spike lit so that there's no extra leaves that are going to rot so that you've cleaned the area around that little white lump and you can pop it into a jar of water you want cold water but not freezing cold so if it's the water is coming out very cold let it warm up to room temperature so it doesn't shock the plant. And what you should be able to do, if you can get a narrow enough container, is just drop it in so that just the bottom goes into the water and the leaves hold it balancing. Now that one balances quite well. Um, now, leave that, but don't leave it in a place where the temperature is going to drop a lot at night, if you can find somewhere steady. So in other words, if you put it on a window ledge, make sure any curtains are drawn behind it to stop the cold air coming. The time it should take for that to produce roots could be 10 days or up to four weeks. It really depends on temperature. 
as soon as you've got roots growing and you need nice, reasonably healthy ones, you do need now to pot it on into compost. And what we're going to do is to mix the compost and it can be ordinary multi-purpose compost um, or your own compost if you can sieve it so that it's light enough. If you have any bits in the compost that are big, take them out because we want some quite nice light compost. And what we're going to do is to mix it with perlite. Perlite, you can buy in most garden centers and it's very good for making the um, compost and mixture lighter, more air, because what we don't want is for your lovely roots to rot off in very damp compost. So what you do is you mix half and half. So I'm going to get another container and mix one, one spoonful of soil, spoonful of perlite, another perlite, another spoonful of compost and so on. So that's quite a nice thing to do and an easy thing to do. People can mix it with their hands or with a spoon, depending on what they prefer to do. So we need to mix that up so it's nice and mixed. And also it's quite nice to feel, it's sort of crunchy. And again, if you find any lumps or bumps in there, take them out to make sure that the roots are going to grow in a nice, balanced compost. Now, what we're going to do is to pot up our little rooted plantlet into a fairly small pot. So I keep my pots from bedding plants and so on from the summer, or th so we can keep reusing our plastic pots. If you haven't got any, a little yogurt pot, but you have to make sure that you put holes in the bottom. So I've drilled, I don't know if you can see that clearly, yes. some holes in the bottom so that the, any water is going to drain out and keep our soil well aerated. So you can fill up your container with a spoon or you can do it by hand or you can even do it by using another container and just scooping it up like that. So once we've got enough in, we're going to make a hole. You can use the end of a spoon, you can use a pencil, but we want to make a hole for the roots. Now, we have to pretend this has got roots on and pop it in. And then we very gradually scoop the compost round and just gently press it down with our fingers. Now, hopefully you've got more than one of these so you can do several at one time, but we do want to make sure these are watered. Now I'm going to put it, because it's got holes in the bottom, I'm going to put it onto a tray and I've kept just a food tray with no holes in so that wherever we are, we're not spilling water. So I'm going to pop it on top and water it. We don't want to splash it with lots of water. So what I've done here is to use a water bottle and made holes in the top. So there, I've drilled holes in the top so that it gently comes out. Now there is a special clever adapter so you can buy one of these, which is, you can screw on to the top of a water bottle or whatever bottle fits, and it has lots of tiny, tiny holes so that it will do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit onto this water bottle and I haven't got one to fit, but I'm sure I could find one if I needed to, but that's really useful and better really than this, but this is another way of doing it. And I've used this for watering seedlings and so on. And you can just gently shake it without the fear of too much water. But the good thing is you've got the perlite mixture in there and any water will drain out onto your tray. And then you can 
pour away any excess there as well. What you want to do is to keep your small new plant somewhere where it's light, so not in a shady place, um, and bright, but not direct sunlight. It's too young, and anyway, most plants don't really like direct sunlight. It's just too much for them. Um, after about two or three weeks, you should see some little tiny roots popping out of the bottom of your pot. And that's when you know that you can pot it up into a slightly larger pot. Always go very gently up in size. Don't put it into a huge pot because often the compost will be too moist for it and there'll be too much compost and not enough space for roots. So just the next size up and then you'll begin to have your mature plant as we've got here. So that's really an easy way of doing it and fun for people to do. But as I say, you've got to grow the baby spikes first, and make sure you've got plenty of those to be able to do it. Other ways of propagating spider plants can be by what we call division. If you look into a mature plant, you should be able to see that it's not just coming from the center, but actually there are lots of smaller plants I'm going to take this one out so that we can really look at it. You can see, I hope you can see, there's one plant here. Yeah. Yeah. If you turn it round, there's another one here. And if you look closely, there are quite a lot of individual plants that have grown from the big mother plant, and you can take it out of the pot and divide it. And I'm going to show how to do that with a peace lily, because that's a good way of propagating a peace lily. <laughs> 